Okay, um, in this video, we're going to cover 1.8c, which is the rational um, inequalities. And so this is basically the technique that we're going to use. It's the same technique that we used for polynomial inequalities, which included quadratic inequalities. So the concepts of key numbers and test intervals can be extended to the rational inequalities. Um, just use the fact that the value of a rational expression can change sign only at its zeros, um, x values for which the numerator is zero, and at its undefined values, the x values for which the denominator is zero. So there, for you're basically going to be finding two types of key numbers um, when you're solving an inequality. Okay. So for the first example, and this I do have on here, so I'm just going to extend this. Um, this is our first example. And so the first thing that you want to do is you um, want to write it as an inequality less than or greater than zero. So what you want is a fraction, some kind of symbol, and then zero on one of the sides, okay? So the first thing that they do is they notice that they don't have it equal to zero here. So they minus three on both sides, and now they do have a zero. And then here, if you put this over one, they're using that basic um, rule where you take 2x minus 7 times 1, which is just 2x minus 7. And then you take x minus 5 times negative 3. So that's negative 3 times x, and then negative 3 times negative 5. Um, and then they combine the like terms. So they got negative x, and they got positive 8. And then from here, to get the key numbers, you're going to take the numerator equal to 0 and the denominator equal to 0. So in this case, that means x plus 8 equal to 0 and x minus 5 equal to 0. So if I minus 8 on both sides, I get negative x equal to negative 8. And if I divide by the negative 1 coefficient, I get x equals positive 8. Over here, if I add 5 to both sides, I get x equals 5. So your two key numbers are going to be 5 and 8. So when you write those numbers on a number line, here's 5, here's 8. Um, one, you have to pay attention to the symbols, OK? So notice that the symbol is a greater, uh, less than, or equal to, which means that my key numbers traditionally would have brackets if there's a bar, right? But the one that comes from the denominator will not have a bar because we know that x cannot equal 5. Otherwise, it makes this whole fraction undefined, OK? So essentially, what that does is it means that here, there's going to be a solid dot. So brackets will go on this spot. And here, it needs to be an open dot because you cannot plug in 5 into your original inequality, OK? Um, and then you notice the intervals that have been created. You have negative infinity to 5. You have between 5 and 8. And then you have 8 going that way. Now, they don't put uh, brackets on anything because they don't want to assume anything just yet, OK? I have already explained to you how you can determine whether or not there'll be brackets or parentheses. Basically, all the key numbers that come from your numerator will be solid if there's a bar. If there's no bar, then they'll all be open, OK? Um, and then you're going to check each interval. So in here. When you check them into this, or you can check them into the original, either way is fine. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to pick a number like um, between this, I'm going to pick zero. And so when you plug in zero in here, you get negative seven over negative five, which is a positive seven fifths. And that's actually like 1.4 or something like that. So um, that's actually less than three. So this section checks out. And then when you plug in a number between there, like maybe uh, 6, you get 12 minus 7, which is 5. And then 6 minus 5 is 1. So, But 5 is not less than 3. So this section does not work. And then you text check another number over there, like maybe um, 9. So you have 2 times 9, 18 minus 7, which is 11. 9 minus 5, which is 4, which is about 2.75, um, which is less than or equal to 3. So um, this section works. 
So then in order to decide, that means that the parentheses will go this way and the bracket will go that way. Um, and if you notice, that's exactly what they have there, okay? Um, and then they have a comment and it says, moreover, because this guy actually equals zero when X equals zero, you can conclude that their solution set consists of a bracket here on the eight, okay? Whereas when X equals five, you won't get zero, right? You'll get undefined. Um, so all the key numbers that come from your numerator will follow the inequality symbol as far as whether to use brackets or parentheses. But any key numbers that came from the denominator will always have parentheses. So let's try another one. Here's an example. Now this one does already have it in that form of fraction, a symbol, and zero. So we are ready to just start taking the key numbers. So when I take the numerator equal to zero, that's 4x minus 1 equal to 0, which is x equal to 1 fourth. If I take my denominator equal to 0, I just get x equal to 0. So these are my key numbers. Here's 0, here's 1 fourth. The one from the denominator will automatically have an open circle. And because I do not have a bar, this one will already will automatically have an open circle as well. Then I'm going to test. So in here, I'm going to test negative one. In here, I'm going to test something smaller than one fourth, maybe 0 0.2, because um, this is 0 0.25. And then over here, we'll test one. So let's go plug those in. So four times negative one minus one over negative one. That's negative five over negative one, which is five. And five is greater than zero. So this section checks out. Now we'll try 0.2. We get 0 0.8 minus 1, which is negative 0 0.2, which is negative 1. And that is not greater than 0. So this section does not check out. And then finally, we'll test 1. So I get 3 over 1, which is greater than 0. So this section tests out. So this section is part of my solution, and so is this one. And since they both have the open dots, my answer is going to be negative infinity to zero with the parentheses, and then parentheses one fourth to positive infinity. And that's the final solution. Now, similarly, we have a couple of extras to try. Um, we've got about three more. So this one is not equal to zero. So we do have to do 4x plus 7 over x minus 1 minus 3. And then we're going to use that property. So we get 1 times 4x plus 7 minus 3 times x minus 1 over x minus 1 times 1, which gives me 4x plus 7 minus 3x plus 3 over x minus 1. And that gives me x plus 10 over x minus 1. So again, my key numbers for the numerator equal to 0. I get x equals negative 10. And for the denominator equal to 0, I get x equals 1. So when I draw my number line, here's negative 10, here's 1. Um, I know that the one that came from the denominator will automatically have an open circle. But the one that came from the numerator will follow whatever symbols are here in the middle. And that is also an open circle. Then I'm going to test my intervals. So negative 11, I'll try 0, and then 2. So let's see. Um, and I'm going to plug them into the original. I always plug them into the original just in case I did this wrong. Um, so I get negative 44 plus 7 which is negative 37 over negative 12, which is a positive 3.083 repeating. That is not less than three. So this section does not work. Now I'm gonna try zero. I get seven over negative one, which is negative seven, and that is less than three. So this section does work. And then finally, I'm going to test the number two. I 
and I get 8, 15 over 1, which is 15, and 15 is not less than 3, so this section does not work either. So my only solution is going to be negative 10 to 1 and both parentheses. Okay. Very similar. I don't know why they used 3 again, but it, it's not a 0. That's the point. Okay. So we're going to minus that three over so we can get the zero. And then we're gonna do that whole um, basic rule here to get one giant fraction. And so I get x plus 18 minus three x minus 12 over x plus four. I get negative two x plus six over x plus four. So then if I take my numerator equal to zero, I get negative two x equal to negative six or x equal to positive three. When I set my denominator equal to zero, I get x plus four equal to zero or x equal to negative four. So when I create my number line, here's negative four, here's three. The one that comes from the denominator will automatically have an open circle. The one that came from the numerator will follow this symbol. Since it has a bracket, there's actually a solid dot here, three. So then now I'm gonna test my intervals. So in this interval, I'm gonna test negative five. In this interval, I'm gonna test zero. And over here, I'm gonna test positive four. And again, I like to test them in the original, okay? So negative five plus 18 over negative five plus four, that is, um, 13 over negative 1, which is negative 13. Now, negative 13 is not greater than or equal to 3. So this section is not part of my solution. Now I'm going to try 0. I get 18 over 4, which is 4.5. And 4.5 is greater than or equal to 3. So the middle section does work. It's part of our solution. And then now I'm gonna check the last one. So the four plus four. X is four. And so I get 22 over eight, which is 2.75, and that is not greater than three. So this is this section will also not be part of my solution, which means the only part of my solution is negative four with the parentheses and three with a bracket. And then finally, our last problem. So notice that it's still not equal to zero. So I'm going to minus that fraction over. Now I have the zero. And then I'm going to use that basic rule to get the common denominator. So I get 2x minus 6 minus x minus 5. And then these guys, just leave them factored. That way it's easy to solve for the key numbers. So I get x minus 11. So then if I set my numerator equal to 0, I get x minus 11 equals 0 or x equals 11. When I set the denominator equal to zero, I get x plus five, x plus three equal to zero, but I can use the zero factor property, which means this guy equals zero or this guy equals zero. So I get another key number here and a third key number there. Oops, negative three. Oh, it should have been minus. I don't know why I wrote plus here, but the denominator has x minus three. So then when I add that over, it will become positive three. So on the number line, I have three numbers. Negative 11 belongs here. Three belongs, negative five belongs there. And then the three. Oh, this is positive 11. So never mind. Let's go in another order. Negative five first, then three, and then the positive 11. Okay. 
And now we're going to test each interval. We'll test zero. We'll test four. And then out here, we'll test 12. So notice you have three key numbers, which means you have four intervals. OK, so testing the first one, negative six. We get two over negative six plus five greater than one over negative six minus three. This is two over negative one, one over negative nine. So I get negative two greater than negative 0 0.111 repeating, okay? This is false. This is a bigger negative, right? This is like saying I have negative 11 cents in my account. This is like saying I have negative $2 in my account. This is worse, okay? It's smaller. This is not a true statement. Now I'm gonna try zero. So two over zero plus five, one over zero minus three. Here I get two fifths. Here I get one over negative three. It doesn't matter really the numbers because a positive is always greater than a negative. So this section will be part of my solution. Now let's test four. So two over four plus five, one over four minus three. So two over nine greater than one over one. This is 0 0.22 repeating, and this is just one. This is not a true statement. So this part is not part of my solution. Now let's test 12. Two over 12 plus five, and then one over 12 minus three. So we get two over 17, one over nine. We know that this is 0.11. I don't know about two over 17. Oh, this is 0. 0.111. This is 0. 0.117. So this is bigger than this one, okay? Um, so this side does check out as well. Now, the numbers, the key numbers that came from the denominator will automatically have open circles. And then the key number that came from the numerator will match whatever symbols there. And since it's a no bar, that means this one will have an open circle too. So my solution will be from negative five parentheses to three, and then from 11 parentheses to infinity. Okay, so now you have some examples there, hopefully with those um, rules, making sure that you have a fraction, your inequality symbol, and then zero, and then making sure that all your key numbers that come from your denominator um, have open circles or parentheses. And then for the key numbers that come from your numerator, make sure you look at the inequality, decide whether or not they should be open circles or solid circles, parentheses or brackets, okay? But that is the end of this section.